TV KPM. Kembali semula ke Road to Success SPM 2020 bersama dengan saya Sean Steven. Kali ini untuk kertas 2 bagi English for Science and Technology. Tapi sebelum kita bermula, saya nak ingatkan kepada anda semua untuk sentiasa mengikut SOP bagi menangani penularan COVID-19. Seperti memakai pelitup muka, kerap cuci tangan, pakailah gel pembasmi kuman ataupun hand sanitizer ataupun sanitasi tangan dan apabila berada di tempat awam, pastikan jarak di antara satu sama lain tidak kurang daripada satu meter. Oleh kerana kami uh, menyentuh ataupun uh, berbual ataupun belajar subjek English for uh, Science and Technology will be Um, speaking throughout this whole program in English. And with me today, I also have, once again from paper one, now we're doing paper two, uh, Cikgu Muhairin. Hello. Hello, Hello again. Yeah. <laughs> Teacher Muhairin you... is back. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. For those of you who did not join us uh, before this, uh, this uh, what we call program right now, now we are touching on paper two. Earlier we were discussing on paper one. We managed to touch quite a lot on paper one but for now like i mentioned we'll be touching on paper two but before that i want to know more i would like to ask uh, teacher muhairin uh, what is actually the difference between paper one and paper two besides the number of course <laughs> okay thank you sean okay paper one it focus on uh, uh, two sections we are section a and b yes section one is uh, the informational transfer okay. okay section b is the report writing yes so for paper one for uh, one hour 15 minutes yes so it it focusly more on writing yes yeah because for section a information transfer you have to read the linear text and you have to transfer the information from the linear text to the non-linear text which could be a diagram mm -hmm. a table a chart All right. Yes. Uh, it's similar to the triple one nine uh, paper for English paper for yes. information transfer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where else for paper two, uh, it focus more on the objectives MCQ, the multiple choice questions. Ah, okay. I see. Okay. So paper one just now I mentioned how what is the duration of the paper? Did you still remember? Uh, one hour and fifteen minutes. Exactly. But yeah. for paper two, the students will be getting one. Hour, okay. 60 minutes. Then they have to answer 30 questions. 30 questions. So that's yeah. approximately two minutes for each, each question. question. Exactly. Yeah. And how many marks does, does that carry? Okay. For paper two. Yes. Ah, uh, 30 marks. Yep. One mark for each question. Okay. For paper one, just now, which yep. I mentioned earlier, uh, for section A, 20 marks. Question one, 10 marks. Question mm -hmm. two, 10 marks. And for the report writing, 30 marks. Where 15 marks is for the content. And 15 marks is for the language. So Great. total marks for paper one is 50. Eh? 30 plus 20, correct? Ah, oh, yeah, correct. 50. 50 <laughs> for paper two? Yes, is 30 marks. Exactly. One mark per question. Yes. Okay. So earlier we were discussing, and you actually mentioned to me that English for Science and Technology or EST this year, or more specifically SPM 2020, it will be the final year for this paper. Is that yes, true? Yes, exactly. So wow. I'm very sad. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Because yes. Because in my previous school, most of my students know me, mm -hmm. teacher Mohairin, as an EST teacher. Ah, <laughs> yes. Okay. So uh, yeah, this year will be the last year for EST papers. Yeah. And the selected their students, yes. these are the chosen candidates for the last EST papers. Yes. Yeah. Because EST comes under KBSM. Now yeah. we move to KSSM. So yes. that's why the uh, the subject is not being offered anymore. Yes, an end right? of an era. But what they say, when one door closes, uh, another window opens, right? Yes. So we're looking forward to that one as well. <laughs> I actually could say that uh, I was actually uh, lucky enough or, or uh, had the honor of having or sitting for the ESC paper back in the day. Lah. I'm not going to mention uh, how many years ago it was, <laughs> or else I'll reveal my age, but it was actually a pretty interesting subject uh, where earlier, uh, before this segment, we were talking about the benefits of uh, taking up this paper and what we can learn from it. I really feel that, yes, it is important where it can actually also fill in the gaps because when I was learning science and maths, uh, it was in, in, in Malay and then later they, they switched it to English and stuff. So it gives that bridge, it bridges um, that gap that, uh, that might be missing in terms of familiarizing with the English terms and also applying both science and maths 
a science and maths pula. Science, science and, and technology. English and, and technology yeah. in the English uh, in the English uh, language. So that's something uh, that uh, that is really really helpful. And for those of you who's going to be sitting for EST Paper One and Paper Two, uh, when will the when will the date be actually? Twenty second of March. Twenty second of March. So that uh, today is the thirteenth. Bit 12. It's 12. Uh, so today is the 12th, so ten you have about days 10 days left for your preparation. And I'm really looking forward to that because, uh, as you mentioned, students should actually take this opportunity to score and score well because this will be the final paper uh, for SPM 20. I mean, not the final paper, but it will be the last time that it will be featured or available for SPM. So before we take a short break, uh, what we can also do is uh, we also have the students who are with us today from the uh, paper one, and they are also here for paper two. Can we have them on screen right now? Hi. Hi. Hi <laughs> okay, we we'll just took a back. short break earlier. <laughs> so we have again, I just want you to introduce yourselves to those who are watching at home. Can we have Esther? Hi, I'm Esther. I'm from Catholic High School. Thank, thank you, Esther. And uh, we also have Sean, Sean Ng. Hi, Sean. Hi, my name is Sean Ng and I'm from SMK BU3. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay. All you need to do is just state your names. Yeah. Next, we have Shermaine. Okay, hi, Shermaine. Hi, I'm Shermaine. Hi, and next, uh, Ken Wei. Hi, I'm Ken Wei. Great. Um, next, uh, Kuku or Justin. Yeah, Justin. <laughs> Hi, I'm Justin. And last but not least, we have Ian. Ian. Hello, my name is Ian. Okay, so uh, before we move on uh, to our next uh, part, maybe uh, do our students uh, we have online have any questions before we move on to our paper two? Any questions so far for paper two? Any questions that's floating in your mind? Okay, so maybe we can proceed first with our paper two, teacher. All right, thank yeah. you very much, Sean. Thank you. Okay, welcome back, my students. Yeah. Okay, are you ready for paper two? Yes, teacher. Yes, paper two. Okay, uh, for your, uh, your information, Sean. Yes. And as the, as uh, I think the students already knew about it. Yeah. That for twenty second, they will be sitting for paper two first. Oh, paper two first. Then only okay. paper one. Am okay. I correct, students? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Paper two meaning the uh, they're going to sit for the exam first for paper two, then only paper one. Great. Okay. So now we are moving to paper two. All right. Okay. Paper two. The code is still the same. Six three five five slash two. Okay. Yeah. The duration is one hour, yes. which is sixty minutes. Okay. There will be twenty five questions. MCQ. What is MCQ stands for? Sean? Multi choice questions. Multiple choice questions. All right, exactly. Almost there. <laughs> <laughs> almost there, right? So 25 questions, which uh, the questions are MCQs and then based on various stimuli. Yes. So it can be linear text, it can mm. be pictures, it yes. can be graph, mm. charts, yeah? Alright. Next five question, which is a rational close question. Okay. okay, I'm sure uh, all of you are familiar with uh, rational close question. It's similar to the triple one nine paper, right? Rational close, okay? All right. So total marks is thirty marks for thirty questions. So one question carries one, one mark. mark. All right. So before we move to the paper two in details, I would like to test my student about the themes and topics, and maybe you to Sean. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so for EST. Yes. Actually, when the students learn EST, they learn the topic, the themes, and topics which relate to the themes. Okay, let me ask Esther. Okay, what are? Do you know how many themes are there in EST? I think there is seven themes. There are seven themes. All of you agree there are seven themes. How about the students at home? Do you know how many themes for EST? Yeah, exactly. Very good. There are seven teams for EST. Yay, well seven. done. All right. Well done. Seven teams. All right. So, and there are many topics which relates to these seven teams. Okay, let's move to the first team. Okay, before we move to the first team, so these are the, the, the description about the teams. Yeah. So, the teams and topic relate directly to science and technology. Curricula, yeah, as taught in secondary school. So students learn to be familiar with the main scientific 
concept and ideas of science and English, uh, science in English, register and vocabulary. So they need to know the terminology yeah, for yeah. Uh, the scientific term terminology and acts as vehicle for instruction and incorporate basic concepts and ideas and kept as simple as possible, referring where wherever possible to everyday example. Yes. So this subject is very beneficial for the students actually. Yeah, all right. So this is the first theme, right? Nature and environment. Okay, if you refer to theme number one, okay, can I ask Justin, can you please read what are the topics which falls under theme number one? Justin? Uh, yeah. Uh, global warming <clears throat> about greenhouse gases, uh, the thinning of the ozone layer, deforestation and soil erosion, weather phenomena, tsunamis, volcanic eruptions, landslides, hurricanes, tornadoes, cyclones, typhoons, recycling about reduce, reuse, recycle, and waste management, which is around like nuclear incinerators, landfill technology. Okay, thank you, Justin. So these are all the topics which relates to nature and environment. Okay. So students, in order for you to prepare for the examination next week, by right, you have to read all the information which relates to the themes which is falls under these topics, right? So these okay. topics are very familiar, right? Okay, so can someone guess what is the second topic? Anyone, let's say, uh, Kwan Yi. What is the second topic? Do you still remember? Can we? Can Maybe we? you can answer. Do you still remember what is the second topic? Uh, should be technology and communications. Technology and communication. Well right done. On. All right, good. <laughs> so this is the second theme, right? Technology and communication. So the topic, the topics under this theme are uh, internet, mm -hmm. which I think the students are very familiar with oh, this yes. topic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the benefit and disadvantages of internet, satellite technology, information management about memory storage, iPad, iPhone, Wi-Fi, and last year the question which came out for 2019, yeah, yes. about internet of things. things. Okay. All right. I think this theme is really interesting. All oh, right. Yes. The student love this theme. All right. Yes. All right. Third theme. How about um, Shamin? Can you guess the third theme? Or let tell the others. Uh, uh, the third theme is energy, matter, or matter, and force and motion. Yes, exactly. Ener ener energy, matter, and mass, force and motion. Force and motion. Okay. Can you read what are the topics under theme number three? Did, can you zoom in, did you? Uh, um, the topics is Newton's law, application of gravity. Fossil fuels, renewable versus non-renewable energy, biomass, geothermal, nuclear, hydroelectric, and hybrid technology. Okay, thank Great. you very much. All right. So these are also inter interesting topic which falls under team number three, the third team. All right. Okay. Team number four. Next, how about? Let's see who else have an answer yeah, who yet. Else? Uh, 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 Ian. 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 Yeah. Excited it, to answer, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, what is team number four? Uh, team number four is men and living organisms. That's well right. Well done, very good. Men and living organisms. So can you read the topics which falls under team number four? Uh, okay, ten. Benefits of microorganisms, food production, germ welfare slash bioweapon, waste management, Environment disaster application, bioregeneration, medical application, negative aspects of microorganism. Yes, very good. So awesome. these are the topics which falls under the fourth theme. Yes. Do you want to guess the fifth theme? Oh, so? <laughs> <laughs> I think I rather not because <laughs> I do not know what okay, the next thing is. Okay, how about this? Okay, we ask help from the students. Um, Sean, yeah, Sean online. What is the, four, the fifth theme? Uh, natural resources and industrial processes. Exactly. Yes. Very good. Natural resources and industrial processes. Can you read the topics which falls under theme number five? Sean? Glass making, vulcanization, smelting of metal ore, 
polymerization, fossil fuels, minerals, treasures of the forest. Okay, thank you, Sean. Okay, team number six. Um, who haven't who answered else? yet? Haven't give me the um, Justin, have you answered yet? I'm the first one to answer. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> my uh, my mistake. Uh, I think have everyone Shamin, answered is so it? far. Oh. Is it Shermin? Have you given him? Uh, yeah, I think Shermin has already answered. You already, uh, you already oh. answered. All right. Okay, Esther. Have you answered? Oh, not yet. Uh, oh, yeah, she's keeping Esther. quiet there. <laughs> <laughs> I can't escape. Please okay. continue, Esther. Yes. What is the team number six? For the universe or astronomy or aerospace. All right, well done. Yeah, the Yay. universe, astronomy and aerospace. Very good, Esther. Can you read the topic? Space exploration, the science or technology, space probes, positive or negative aspects, space programs, satellites, types or technology, positive and negative issues, stages in star development, celestial bodies and space technology. Okay, thank you, Esther. Okay, the last team, team number seven. How about Sean? Um, I do not know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is team number... Seven. There we go. Nutrition, food, health, and human body. Exactly. Just at the tip of my tongue. I just yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the team which sorry the topic which falls under team number seven. All right. Yes. And then it's also related to the current issue. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is the topic that can relate to this team? I would say it's number four viruses. Yes. Yes. About oh, the, uh, more specifically. Yeah. Oh, okay. COVID nineteen. Uh, the corona. Coronavirus. Virus. Yes. Right. Okay. Well done. So, all together, there are seven teams in EST. Yeah. Okay. So, all these teams and topics, are they learn in their uh, lessons. In their syllabus, yeah. In school. All right. So, they need to read a lot about uh, all the topics which relates to the seven teams. In order for, they to, in, for the, in order for the students to gain the knowledge, yeah, it's either you can read from uh, the encyclopedia, you can watch documentaries, you can search from the internet yeah, for the current, for the latest information <coughs> which relates to the seven themes. Yes. All right. So, this is the example of question number 10 for paper 2. All right. So, it is a linear text. This is a linear text. Okay, what do you understand from the linear text? Linear text is a text, yeah, written, uh, it's a type, type text. So you have to read the linear text, all right? And the answer is, uh, the four choices answer are given, four options, sorry, four options. Okay, so you have to read the linear text carefully. Okay, this is question SPM 2007. Okay. Can some, okay, how about um, Justin? Can you read the question for number 10? Uh, can you zoom in? Uh, can you zoom in? Oh, zoom in. <coughs> okay, there it is. All right. Fine. Okay. Okay. One of the first decisions by designers in planning how to make an object is which materials to use. The properties of a material include its hardness, strength, and flexibility. Some materials are combustible. Others are heat or electric conductors. The properties of material determine how, this, how it can be used. For example, combustible materials should not be used in a kitchen or places in direct contact with heat and flame. Okay, thank you, Justin. So when you get this question, okay, for paper two, you have to look for the keyword in the question. Okay, the keyword. If you refer to question number 10, what is the keyword, Justin? Uh, what, what does combustible mean? So the keyword here is means. So you must know what is the term com combustible in the above text means. Do you want to answer it straight away? Uh, okay. okay. Uh, the answer is B. The answer is to burn so combustible to burn means easily. yes to burn easily. Well done. All right, is it clear? So for uh, MCQ, I think it's much more easier compared to paper one. 
Yeah, for paper two. Okay, can we move to the next question? Yes, we can. All right. So, just now, one uh, for question ten, one linear text, only one question being asked. Yes. But for this question, one linear text, two questions. Oh, okay. All right, are being asked. So question number thirteen and number fourteen. Okay, how about Ian? Can you read the questions? The text, sorry, the linear text. Oh, Ian, you have to unmute yourself. All right, thank you. Oh, sorry. No worries. Uh, can you zoom in? All right, okay. Okay, thank you. Vitamins are complex organic molecules that serve as coenzymes. This means that vitamins activate enzymes and assist with their function. For example, the presence if vitamin V1 or diamine is essential to the function of two enzymes that catalyze the first step in aerobic respiration. Without diamine, aerobic respiration cannot proceed because vitamins perform such vital functions and generally cannot be synthesized by the body. A daily diet should include the proper amounts of all vitamins. Okay, thank you. All right, can you give me the answer for number 13? Hold on, Yian. Ah, Do you yeah. already know the answer for that question? Yes? No, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Okay, so before, before you actually figure out the answer, you can read the question correctly because we're going to take a short break and we'll come back with the answer to that question and that answer will be answered by Ian. Stay tuned, everyone. This is Road to Success SPM 2020 for Paper 2 of English for Science and Technology. Stay tuned. Didik TV KPM Currently, I'm a third-year undergraduate in cell and molecular biology at University of Utrecht, Malaysia. Meanwhile, I'm also the ex-code of academics and alumni of the Faculty Students Association. The benefits of studying EST is that I learned the ways to scientifically define the terms by ensuring that I include both the non readiness descriptions. I always apply this knowledge whenever I need to state the definitions of the jargons. I also learn to differentiate between facts and opinion during my EST classes. There's no doubt that the ability to differentiate between facts and opinions is important to debunk baseless dramas and pseudoscience, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. Besides, taking EST also familiarizes me with scientific writings. This is important for me because I'm planning to get involved in scientific research and science communications as a scientist in the future. Didik TV KPM Didik TV KPM And we are back to Road to Success SPM 2020 for the subject English for Science and Technology Paper 2. And uh, with me here in the studio, we have Cikgu Muhairin uh, that is leading the class. Over to you, Cikgu Muhairin. Thank you very much, Sean. Okay, welcome back. Yeah. All right, just now we stop with... Oh, Ian. yes, we had the question. For Ian, correct? Yes, Ian was ah. just about to answer before I interrupted her. Yes. <laughs> Please continue. Okay, Ian, it's yours now. What is the answer for question number 13? Before you answer question number 13, okay, what is the keyword? So when you answer pa question for paper 2, yes. yeah, you have to find the keyword for the question in order for you to choose the correct answer from the four options given. Okay, so, all, uh, Ian, what is the keyword for question number 13? The keyword is, the follow sta following statements is true. Okay, which of the following statements is true? So, the keyword is the word true. Yeah, very good. So, which is the best answer for number 13? I think it's C. Vitamins help enzymes with their functions. Why do you think the answer is C? Can you just because? Uh. Sorry. Ian, you, yeah. Are uh, we like to proceed? Yeah, Ian. Uh, because vitamin for for A, vitamin V one is not synthesized by the body. 
Okay. okay. That is totally false. Okay. B. Vitamins are complex organic molecules, not enzymes. Okay. Good. C. Okay. Vitamin B1 is not the only catalyst. There is also diamine. Okay. So your answer is C. Okay. How about the other students? Do you agree with Ian answer? Yes? Okay. Yes. So let's look at the answer. Oh, no. The answer is D. Yeah? The answer is D. The best option is D. All right? Okay. Let's move to question number 14. The word synthesize. Okay, just now in the text. The word synthesize can be replaced with... Okay. Which is the uh, best word to replace the word synthesize? How about... Um, Sean? Uh, I will use digested. Digested. Okay, good try, Sean. How about, uh, can we? What is your answer? Uh, I would use uh, reproduced. Produced, D. Your answer is produced. Sean, your answer is digested. Okay, we are, I'm going to ask Justin, what is your answer? For question number 14. Uh, absorbed. I go with absorb. <laughs> you choose absorb. <laughs> All right. Good. Next. Uh, Ian? Okay, she already answered question number 13. Okay, we go to Esther. Produced. Produced. You also say produced. And Shamin? I will also choose produced. Okay, let's look at what is the answer. Okay, the answer is correct. Produced. Produce. Okay, so you have to be careful. Yes. Yeah? Because yeah. uh, for this type of question, when the keyword can be, uh, which word can best be replaced for the word synthesize, you have to refer to the context. Yeah, to the context. Yeah, so you cannot just like find the similar meaning of synthesize, but you must relate to the context. So yeah. if you refer to the context earlier in the linear text, the best word to replace synthesize is produce. Produce. Okay. Um, could we just go back to question number 13 just now? Yes. Um, sorry about that. Um, could you explain to us, uh, is that the uh, question, uh, answer D is the correct answer, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so that means C is actually the wrong answer? Yes. C, the statement is not true if you refer to the To the text. text. Okay, okay. Because just wanted to go it must back to refer yeah. to, the text, to the text, to the content. Okay. okay. So that's it. why sometimes students tend to make mistakes because yeah. they, tend to, they tend to find the answer which relate more to the uh, their understanding, okay. not related, not to, related the to the text, text. itself. Okay. okay. So All the right. tips from here is always, always refer to the text. Exactly. Okay. To Good. find the best answer. You yes. cannot just like type the word synthesize, what is the uh, simi the synonym of synthesize in yes. order for you to replace the word, uh -huh. right? For example, for synthesize. Yes. So you have to refer to the... Uh, in content. the context of the text itself. All right. Okay. So that is the tips, right? You read carefully the text, then only you find the best answer for the question. Cool. All right, next for question number 13. Okay, just now, I gave you example of two linear texts. Yes. So this is the different stimuli. Remember, for paper two, there are different stimuli yes. for the questions. Okay, this is in terms of graph. Yes. Okay, you will be getting a graph, okay, about the loss of bone density in women. Okay. So you have to study the graph in order for you to find the best answer for number 13. Okay, let's ask... Um, let's see, I think Charmaine. Yeah, Charmaine. What is the best answer? Of, before we, you tell me the answer, what is the keyword for question number 13? Uh, concluded. Yeah, the word conclude. So from the graph, what can be concluded from... Uh, uh, what can be concluded from the graph, all right? So what do you understand from the word concluded, Shamin? <laughs> it's like the conclusion for the whole graph. Very good, yeah? Okay. So now, what is the best answer that you can conclude from the graph? The conclusion, yeah? You, con you can conclude from the information uh -huh. in the graph. I think the answer is bone density reaches its peak at the age of 30. You, so your answer is D. Okay. Yes. Okay. Do students at home also agree with Shermin? The answer is D. Okay, let's look at B. Yeah, sorry, let's look at the first option. 
bone density reaches its peaks just before menopause. At what age usually women menopause? If you refer to the graph. Sean, you want to try? You look interested. Oh, no, I'm actually by trying studying to zoom the, in to see. <laughs> by looking at the graph. Okay, okay. I think it's uh, between ages, uh, I mean, from my sight over here, uh -huh. even though I'm wearing glasses, um, I think it's 45 to 55. Yeah, between 45 it? to 55 years okay. old. Yes. So, bone density reaches its peaks just before monopause. Is it true? It is a false. Yeah, correct. So B, we look at B. Bone density continues to increase after the age of 30. If you look at the lines, yes. does it increase or decrease after the age of 30? Okay, let's ask um, Kian Wei for B. If you study the graph, does it increase or decrease? Decreases. Yeah, decreases. Yeah, the line decreases. Okay, so B is always old, old also wrong. So C, bone density continues to increase after monopause. Is it true? By standing the graph? By looking at the graph, is it true? Someone wants Esther? to answer? All right, we no. got Esther. No. Yes. So the best answer is D. D. Right? Correct. Yeah, the answer is D. Okay, well done. Okay, let's move to the next question. Okay, this is another type of question. Just now the first one. It's the linear yes. graph, and then we have a picture, a graphic here. All yes. right? So, who wants to read? Uh, Justin? Maybe. Yes, Justin. Yeah. Can you, uh, read? Can you zoom in first? Uh, thanks. <clears throat> Unlike the passengers in an aircraft, people on the ground can hear a sonic boom when a supersonic aircraft aircraft flies over. This is caused by the aircraft squashing up air in front of it, creating a shock wave that makes a loud sound. Okay, thank you, Justin. So, what is your answer for this question? Uh, can you zoom in again? The answer is A, yeah. A? I think the answer is A. Yeah. I think the answer is A. Okay, thank you, Justin. How about the others? Do you want to try, Sean? Um, I'll let uh, the others I... answer first and uh, then I'll look okay. through again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how about, um, let's ask uh, Ian. What is your answer, Ian? I think the answer is C. C. So here, all right? Some of you answer A, one of you answer C. Just now, Justin answered A, right? Okay, Shermin, what is your answer? I also choose C. You also choose C. Okay, go back to Sean online. Uh, I also choose C. Okay, can you justify your answer? Why is it C? Uh, because when you have a, a sonic boom shockwave, Mm -hmm. That means you're traveling at the speed of sound or even faster. So you will essentially push the sound back, I think, something like that. Oh, okay. A good elaboration. But the best answer is D. Because for supersonic, yeah, the when the aircraft flies, then only you can hear the sound. sound. All right? All right, so you have to read more on this topic, okay? Because it, the question say, in which area will people hear the sonic boom? So, actually, the later part, because the supersonic aircraft is very fast. The, the sound comes later. Ah, I see. All right? Okay. Okay, next one. Question number three and four. Okay, this type of question, you only get a mind map like this. Okay. Okay, there's no... It is a non-linear text. Okay, so you have to study, all right, in order for you to understand and to answer the question later. Two questions for this, uh, uh, what you call this mind map, all yes. right? Okay, so the question, based on the diagram above, which of the following has to be removed to prevent depression? Okay, let's go back to the diagram. Okay, can you... 
so you have to study the diagram first the di sorry the, the mind map first is about depression about chronic stress okay about, all right and then the recovery and the depressive illness okay so we get go back to the question from the diagram above which of the following has to be removed to prevent depression okay you look at the choices the option given recovery depressive illness abnormal re response and chronic stress so which one is the best answer uh, can we uh, the answer should be d chronic stress chronic stress okay exactly very good all right well done well done so how about number four esther what is the answer for number four okay what is the keyword first for number four what can we infer from the diagram above? What is the keyword? Infer. Okay. Oops, sorry. Infer. All right. Very good. So, what is the best answer for number four? You want to look uh, at the diagram, the, the mind map again? Uh, yes. Oops, sorry. Okay. All right, can we move to the question? Correct me if I'm okay. wrong, but uh -huh. I think uh, the tip that we can get from this question would refer to the lines or the arrows that goes, right? Exactly. Okay. Okay, you okay. see the arrows? So, yes. tiredness, aggression, worry and physical, physical illness, illness will lead to chronic stress. Yes. This will lead to? Depression. Depression. So, it's all about the arrows there. Yeah. Okay. You have to know the arrows, okay? Okay. You have to study by looking at the arrows, okay? Got it. Okay, so what is the answer for number four? Stress which lead to depression can be treated. Okay, stress will lead to depression can be treated. Exactly. Well done. Well done. Okay, because if you see number one, there's no recovery for worry and tiredness. Is it true? I would say that is false. Yeah, because if you feel worry, you feel tired, what must you do? Oh, uh, when it comes to tightness, I would sleep. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that is yes. common. Yeah, yes. we know about that. So for sure, the uh, for A is wrong. Yes. Right. And abnormal response will lead to chronic stress. Okay. If you refer to the diagram, that is, uh, that is also uh, untrue. Okay. False. Okay. And D, a healthy response will lead to recovery or depressive illness. A healthy response. Yeah. We usually cause positive outcomes. Yeah. Yes. Pick, all right. So straight away, actually by reading the option given also, we can guess the answer. The answer. All yeah, right, good. Right. All right, can we move to the next slide? Okay, this is the rational close. Remember earlier, I told you that, I told the students and for the information of the student at home also, there are 25 MCQ questions, yeah, yes. with, with different stimuli and five questions for rational close. So this is the net rational close question yes yeah, okay it's similar to the triple one nine paper also in english paper they have rational clothes so okay. you have to read the text in order for you to get the ideas what are what is the text about okay and you have to find the best answer for each blanks okay okay this section it tests on your understanding your vocabulary the terminology which relates to science and also technology okay, okay. so um Let's see who will yeah. be the lucky one to read and answer. <laughs> Anyone wants to yeah. volunteer? How about you? You pick one student. Sean. Oh, I'll choose. Okay. Yeah, you choose. Eeny, meeny, miny, more Charmaine because she has a bigger <laughs> smile. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Okay. Um, many people are still in the dark about proper care and usage of contact lenses. One of the most common mistakes users make is to wear them for too long. This can cause their corneas to become hypoxic. Uh, do I have to answer that or just Okay, you just read until the word oxygen, then I go to the option of the uh, the answers for question 26. Okay. okay. Oh, Why the cornea does not get enough oxygen? Okay, let's look at the options for 26. Okay, disease, problem, situation and condition. So which one do you think wow. is the best? Uh, I think this is uh, condition. 
a condition where the cornea does not get enough ox oxygen. oxygen. Okay. Exactly. Very good. Well done, Shobin. All right. Okay. I look. I, I see that um, when we read the question or the sentence, uh, it, it actually can be quite tricky if you do not understand the context of what they're trying to present over there. Because the questions are about the same, like situation, problem, or even disease. And obviously, the answer condition will be correct if you actually understand what they're trying to say. Yes. So, I mean, like what you mentioned earlier, it's very important for students to actually read and understand every information that's given up. It must relate to the content. Yes, correct. The, yeah. Okay. Right. Very Please good. Please proceed. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Let's move to the to number twenty-seven. Okay. This time I choose the student. All How right. about Sean? Continue from number twenty-seven. Okay. The corneas of younger people are able to tolerate higher states of hypoxia, but the sustenance of the cornea with age. Okay, so just now 26, the answer is D. What is your answer for 27? Uh, decreases C. Decreases. Are you yes. sure about that answer? Yes. Exactly. <laughs> Very good. All right. Okay. Well done. Well done. Thank okay. You. Oh, sorry. Next. Uh, okay, Justin. The next. Sentence. Yeah, can you zoom in? Uh, <clears throat> repeated hypoxia can cause the eyes to become very dry and irritable, swollen or infected. Even colored contact lenses worn for cosmetic purposes reduce oxygen to the eyes. Okay, so the options given for number 28. Availability, possibility, regular, regularity or capacity. I think the answer is A. A, availability. Oh, well done. Okay. Awesome. Excellent. <laughs> okay, next. The next sentence. All right, uh, Ian. Does they carry the same? The same? Uh, risk. Riz, your answer is Four. Riz? B. Okay, we reserve that answer first. Okay, the last sentence. Sean, would you like to choose? Because there are only two only left. Only two more students. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Huh, okay. I think Kian Wei looks like he wants to answer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, read the final question. Okay, yeah. final sentence. Kian Wei. And we answer the question, yeah? yeah. Okay, Kian Wei. Uh, they should be used with much care, like, Blank lenses. Uh, uh, no, no, just carry on reading the final uh, yeah. sentence. Yeah. Oh, Starting right. with colored lenses. Colored lenses being slightly thicker would also be less water permeable and allows oxygen to enter than normal lenses. Okay, thank you, Kian Wei. So, your answer is? Uh, my answer is D, prescriptive. Prescriptive. Okay, just now. Uh, yeah, uh, it was, Ian, uh, Ian, your yeah. answer is? Riz, right? Okay, let's look whether your answer is correct. Very yes. good. Well done. And also, okay, the last one is selective. Yeah, can we? Your answer just now is prescriptive, right? So the best word to suit the last sentence is selective. All right? Okay, so I so these are about paper two. Paper two. Yeah, okay. which it covers all the Theme and topics that you have learned in EST. Yes. And then you have to know the terms. Although the words like uh, uh, just now, like you mentioned, Sean, yeah, the yes. problem, situation, condition, and diseases, mm -hmm. sometimes it's confused yes, the students, right. yeah, yeah, from these choices of words. So you have to relate to the content yeah. in order for you to find the best answer that suit the blanks, which okay. relate to the contents. Great. Okay. So before we end, uh, maybe you could give us um, some, uh, maybe a conclusion to what we have learned today and also some word of advice 
for those who are going to sit for EST or English for Science and Technology on the 22nd of March. Okay, thank you very much, Sean. Okay, I just want to recap a, a little bit. Okay. Can we, uh, we try to recall what we have done in paper one just now. Yes. Remember about the format of recommendation and yes. the informational report. Yeah. Yeah. Because you have to focus for paper, uh, you have to focus on paper one. Also. Uh, uh, you have to focus on paper one because it carries more mark than paper Correct. two. Yes. Yeah. But paper two is something that when you make a wrong choices, then your answer is wrong yes, because it's uh, objective. So yes. you have to be careful when making a choice. Okay. Yes. EST is not easy to f it's not easy to fill. So far, when I was teaching my previous school, yes. hundred percent of my students passed wow. the EST papers. Yes. Okay. So it's not. You won't fail the paper, I can guarantee you. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, most of the students who mm -hmm. uh, set for EST papers are excellent students like you, Sean. Oh, you still remember you the oh, subject till today. <laughs> <laughs> right? You, you, you are a smart you are among the smart students. Yes. Yeah? So maybe that's you can why. give us some tips or maybe some word of advice for those who's going to sit uh, for this paper on twenty second of March. Mm -hmm. Maybe a quick one, maybe you can tell them some word of advice what they should do to prepare themselves for this paper okay first you have to read a lot yes because EST you need to read a lot yes yeah and then some of the topics that you read which relate to the seven themes I introduced you earlier yeah you cannot get from your text yes so you have to do extra reading extra readings meaning from the encyclopedia from the internet yes. yeah from the newspapers all right you have to do extra reading yeah all right because EST is a subject that tested on the student's knowledge, not the teacher's knowledge. Yes. Because the teachers only guide you on how to answer paper one and paper two. This is what I always tell my student. Whatever you write, the report, yeah, especially the report, it shows, it, uh, shows what you have learned, what you have read, your general knowledge. Yes. Yeah, so the more you read the more knowledge you gain yes. and the more elaboration you can give all right okay, okay. i hope thank you so much I uh teacher muhairin for uh, giving us those words, of advice, uh, those words of advice as well as sharing your knowledge with us today for uh, paper one as well as paper two for english for science and technology and of course special thanks also to our students who are online we got sean you can just wave as i mentioned your name we got sean Shermaine. Esther, Justin, uh, I, sorry, Ian, and Kian Wei. Thank you so much for joining us. And of course, thank you for your participation. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who's going to be sitting for English for Science and Technology on the 22nd of March, all the best to you. And hopefully, whatever that uh, Chekgu or teacher Muhairin has shared with us today will be very, very beneficial for all of you. And once again, thank you so much, uh, teacher Muhairin, okay, for being with us today Sean. here today on STM. All the best for the students. Thank you so much. And uh, for uh, what we call Road to Success, SPM 2020. Nama saya Sean, host anda untuk Road to Success SPM 2020. Kita berjumpa lagi. Bye bye. Bye. Dede TV KPM. Hi, I'm Audrey Yap. My son Brandon is uh, sitting for the SPM exam right now. He's from SMK Yubuwa Kajang. It's been a tough year for him uh, and all his roommates for online study and studying on your own. I think it's been a challenge as well for the teachers doing all the teaching with the new norm. But I think uh, all together we have uh, done a great job to pull through. So Brandon has worked very hard and I would like to wish him and all his uh, friends all the best for the examinations. Fighting.